In this video, I'm going to compare the Pilot Flex Pens in my collection. This is something I wish I had when I first started drawing with fountain pens and looking at the dizzying variety of pens on the market in order to decide which pen to purchase. Now, since I've acquired all the Pilot Flex Pens with the exception of the Justice, I thought it would make myself useful and make a video for those trying to decide which flexible Pilot Pen to get. Now, uh, it should be said that all these pens are very popular with artists, and in fact, all of them are pretty great. Uh, look, Flex Pens are notoriously fickle things, and I'm not just talking about vintage pens. Uh, sometimes they drip or write too wet. Sometimes the feed doesn't keep up and the pen railroads. They can be hard starters, too stiff, too soft, too scratchy. In short, they potentially suffer from a much greater variety of faults than is possible with a regular pen with a stiff nib. What's worse is that you can usually tune a regular nib to work right by making all kinds of little adjustments, uh, the tutorials for which are available all over the internet. But a flex nib is much more difficult to make adjustments to. Uh, it's just a much more fickle thing. Now, that said, these many faults don't seem to apply to Pilot. At least that's been my experience. All of these pens, these four pens, always start. They never leak. Uh, they all have very smooth, responsive nibs, uh, even when they're extra fine. Uh, there might be one little exception, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but generally, they really never have problems with flow uh, or performance. Uh, these are really practical workhorse pens, perfect for the studio, and really not made for coddling or sitting around a collector's box, but for heavy usage. Uh, that make, this makes them perfect for artists, uh, for people that use these pens professionally, um, that don't just collect fountain pens for their looks, but um, are really into using them for, for what they are, which are drawing tools. Okay, so let's begin with comparisons. I'm going to give you a brief description of each pen, demonstrate its various properties, its flexibility, its wetness, its general drawing characteristics, and then hopefully by the end of this you'll have a better idea of what pen you like to get. Unless, of course, I convince you to collect all of them, in which case my apologies, but look, that's what you get for watching pen videos. Okay, so here goes. Uh, let's start off with the cheapest and least flexible pen, the Pilot Custom 74. That's going to be this one right here. <clears throat> Now, uh, first of all, it should be said that many people, when they hear this referred to as flex, will scoff. Oh my god, how can I be calling this a flex pen? Well, actually, it's a soft pen. Uh, the difference is that flex has more line variation, and then soft nibs generally have thinner lines. Uh, where soft ends and flex begins is not entirely clear. Um, but, um, again, you know, just to be honest, uh, this is probably technically not what's called a genuine flex pen, but more like a, a soft pen. A bouncy pen. Um, this nib is easily the finest of Pilot's offerings. Uh, this is the Pilot Custom 74 again with a soft fine SF nib. Um, it tends to have the finest line of all the four pens that I have. Uh, now this has soft bind. It might even be considered like an extra fine. Um, so let's take a look at it. This is the Pilot. Let's see, trying not to run off the camera here. Pilot. Custom 74 with a soft, fine nib. So let's do a few little tests. Um, let's do a little crosshatch going this way. Very, very fine line. Very fine line. Let's take a look at the line variation. Uh, now, even though the line variation on this is probably, hopefully, let's see if I can zoom in on a little bit of this. Okay. Um, the line variation on this is not as great as other pens, but it starts off as a very thin line at the beginning, and so it goes from extra fine to this maybe a medium or a broad. Um, let's do a wetness test. Fairly dry writer. Um, let's do those standard figure eights that everybody loves doing for some reason. So not a lot of line variation, but again, because it starts off with an extra fine line, you know, probably the range of line variation is greater than maybe even a Pilot Falcon, which is generally considered to be the softer pen, the more flexible pen. All right, uh, so since I'm doing this review for artists, I'm going to do a little doodle for you where I'm trying to employ some line variation here. You know, one of the things I really like about this pen is 
its ability to put down almost like whisper-like hairline strokes. Very, very fine. And by the way, this pen works really well in reverse writing as well, which makes the lines even finer. Okay, so there's a few little demonstrations of its properties. You can see a very fine line with a slight line variation. Uh, but again, the question is when buying flexible pens, particularly for drawing, how much flex do you really need? You know, most of the really soft, what are they called, wet noodle pens are really designed for calligraphy if you're doing what it's called cobbler plate, where you need really thick and thin kind of ornamental lines. Um, which, I don't know, many artists, particularly today, when drawing, doing observational drawing, don't really employ. Now, let's talk about the body of the pen what some people call the furniture. Um, look, really this pen is nothing special. There's a lot of pens like it. Um, I'm not really going to get focused on its appearance. Uh, it's a traditional kind of torpedo shaped pen. Uh, a lot of pens on the market look like this. Um, the main thing is its ergonomics. Uh, it's very comfortable. It's very thin. Uh, one advantage is the fact that because of its thin body, you can hold the pen a little bit further back, which is, as you guys know, good for sketching, right? Holding the pen way back allows you to put down less pressure and put down an even finer line. Um, <clears throat> all the Pilot pens are plastic. Uh, there is, you know, obviously if you start dealing with um, the vanishing point and there's some metal offerings. But uh, these four pens are relatively light. They're resin. They've got a few little O-rings to make it heavier. Uh, the plastic doesn't feel insubstantial. All these pens are very sturdy. Um, but the ergonomics are very comfortable, as they are with all of these pens. Um, it posts well, and because the cap is relatively light, the balance really doesn't change that much, posted and unposted. And the good thing is, because this pen is relatively long, it works really well unposted. Right? So even if you have a larger hand and you don't like posting your pen, it fits really comfortably in your hand. Uh, the other advantage to its length is the fact that it accommodates Pilot's excellent CON70 converter, which is a push-button converter, which gives you lots of incapacity, which is pretty important for a pen that flexes, which, okay, not this one, but some of the other ones uh, gush a little more ink. Uh, you go through ink a lot faster with a, with a flex pen. Uh, so it has the advantage of having a really good incapacity with this CON70 converter. Um, Lastly, uh, this is the least expensive option in my collection. Uh, if you buy it from Japan, it'll run you probably around $110. Uh, yes, I know there's a moral quandary with this. Uh, you know, look, I, I like supporting local businesses like Goulet Pens uh, that I'll link to um, at the bottom of this video. I try to buy from U.S. companies uh, when I can. Uh, I try to support small business. But this pen has an almost $60 markup uh, in price in the U.S. So, the uh, decision is up to you. Um, why it's marked up, uh, it's not the case with other Pilot Pens. I don't know, it's a question of marketing. Uh, so, um, I bought this directly from Japan. It took a little while to get here, particularly with a quarantine, uh, with you know some delays in shipping from Japan. Um, okay, so this is the Pilot Custom 74. We'll just leave it here for now, like this. And let's move on to the next pen. Uh, this pen is the Pilot Falcon. Um, this is probably the most famous, well-known pen for drawing among artists. Uh, when I first started my fountain pen journey, uh, this is the pen that was recommended to me by my artist friend. Um, I asked him what fountain pen to buy, and he pulled out his uh, Pilot Falcon. Uh, this one is a... So this is sorry. This is a just a fine, not an extra fine, a fine. Uh, so this is the Pilot Falcon. With a soft, fine nib. Okay, so let's go through the tests. You can see that this pen puts down a slightly heavier line than the Custom 74. This is without pressure at all. Let's flex it a little bit. So you can see it has a little bit more flex than the Custom 74, but it starts off thicker, right? So you can see that the Custom 74 starts off with a hair, even thinner than a hair, and goes thick, whereas this one already starts off as kind of a traditional fine line. Um, all right, now let's do the wetness test here. 
Um, okay, I can put down a little bit more ink. Uh, this is generally a wetter writer. It puts down a little bit more ink than the Custom 74, which runs a little bit dry. Let's do our figure eights. Okay, and let's do a little doodle here where I'm trying to employ. So you can see the line is thicker with the Pilot Falcon. Um, this can be a little bit an issue when you're cross-hatching on slightly cheaper paper. Sometimes the paper gets really wet, sometimes the paper will feather. Um, I don't have as much of an issue with the Custom 74 with that, uh, but I do have an issue with the Pilot because of that. Yeah, let's do a little bit of cross-hatching here. So look, a little bit of a heavier line. All right, uh, now let's talk once again about the furniture. Uh, in terms of weight, very similar to the Custom 74. Um, it's a little bit of a shorter pen, so we can compare it up. Oh, stop rolling away. A little bit shorter, but you know, really not as much. All the pilot pens are more or less the same, kind of the same size. Um, in fact, I said it was shorter. You know, it's very similar in size. Very similar. Okay, so same length as the Pilot um, Custom 74. Um, it posts well. Again, the balance is, all these Pilot pens is really well considered. So it posts fairly deeply. Uh, it's comfortable posted, unposted. Uh, so the ergonomics, again, all these pens is really pretty, pretty excellent. Um, the only drawback with this pen, and this is something I've discussed in other videos, but it bears repeating. Uh, this pen, and I don't know why, because look, if it's the same length, it should be able to accommodate the larger converter, but it doesn't. So it can only accommodate Pilot's somewhat inferior CON40 converter. Uh, inferior because it has a lot less ink capacity. So this thing usually only fills maybe half of the way up. Um, and look, when you're using flex pens, particularly this is a wetter writer, you tend to go through your inks uh, fairly quickly. I would say that's the only uh, drawback. Now, uh, there is a metal version of this which is probably a hundred dollars, maybe seventy-five dollars more expensive, which I don't know, to my mind is probably not worth it. I haven't tried it. Um, I'm assuming it's a heavier pen. Um, but that's really the only drawback with this pen. Now this pen also has some unique advantages to it uh, that do not exist in the other flex pens made by Pilot. Um, first of all, it's a really excellent reverse writer, so you can tease out a much thinner line. Uh, this is probably the best reverse writer of any of the other pens. And then, the unique shape of this nib allows you to hold it flat against the paper in reverse and create these kind of dry brush effects. This is pretty neat. It's a little bit hard to control, right? So you have to hold the, the pen really flat against the paper to do this. Um, and it ends up being very wet, so you end up putting down a lot of ink. You can't see this, but it's kind of pooling up. So I do use this occasionally when I'm doing landscape drawing. You want to create some kind of like random textures some strong flat black sometimes in the shadows, but uh, I find myself mostly not using this particular feature. It, it is cool. Um, it was definitely one of the selling points when I bought this pen. Um, but, um, you know, again, this pen is pretty is pretty unique in that respect. Okay, so that's the Pilot Falcon SF. Really popular pen with artists for good reason. Uh, again, it's like the Custom 74, very reliable, lightweight, sturdy. Um, these pens are very comparable. Uh, this pen, uh, there's usually no discount if you buy directly from Japan. It costs the same in the U.S. as it does everywhere else. Uh, this pen retails for about $150, which makes this the cheaper option. So, these pens are very similar. If I was going to decide which one to buy, it would be based on how much you like thin lines. Um, I personally gravitate towards this pen for a number of reasons. First of all, it's just my drawing style, right? I like using thinner lines. I like building up value little by little through a variety of uh, layers of cross hatching. Um, the fact that it writes a little bit drier is better for me. Um, so uh, the difference is just the wetness of the writing experience um, and then also the bigger converter. So my personal recommendation between these two pens, very similar, very comparable. Um, this one probably edges out because, you know, look, it's $40 cheaper you know, if you buy directly from Japan. It's got a larger ink capacity, which is important. Um, I would say buy this one as opposed to the Falcon.
Um, all right, now let's move on to Pilot's true, quote unquote, flex, flex pens. Um, let's take a look. Okay, so here is the next one. This is the Pilot 912. Pilot 912 with an FA nib. So you have to be careful when you're buying these because they come, this particular pen, and actually the Custom 74 as well, this pen comes with a huge, huge variety of different nib options. In fact, uh, I think the reason why Pilot has this 912 is to offer the largest variety of nib options than any of the other um, line of Pilot pens. So uh, it comes in a soft fine, just like the Custom 74, which I don't have. Um, but it also comes with a number 10 FA nib. So this is the Pilot 912 with the FA nib. All right, so let's run it through its paces a little bit. First thing, notice that it puts down a much heavier line. All right, so this might be the equivalent to almost a medium, right? Uh, let's put it through its flex paces. Okay, so you can see that here, this is a true flex pen, right? We're starting to get real line variation here. Uh, wetness test. This is much wetter than the other two pens, right? And probably the wettest one of all of the, all the pens I have. Uh, let's do our standard figure eights. All right, uh, again, very wet, and let's do a little doodle, a little face doodle here. Let's cross hatch a little bit. This pen is very flexy and very, very wet. Okay, this guy's balding a little bit, I guess. Okay, so overall, how does this pen compare with the Falcon and the Custom 74? Well, uh, it flexes much wetter. It, it flexes much more than either of these two pens. So whereas these might be considered bouncy or soft nibs, this is a true, this is a true flex. Um, it's much wetter than these two pens. Uh, you can see the line think this is much thicker, considerably thicker than the other two pens. Um, what else can I say about it? Um, look, I've heard it said that this particular pen is just about the closest you can get to vintage flex, just out of the box without buying a custom nib or some kind of customization um, from one of the many websites that offer those kind of services. Um, I really like this pen. Uh, it works really well. Again, it's very reliable in terms of ergonomics, very similar to the other two. It's lightweight, a little bit heavier than the other two just because it's got a little bit more of these O-rings. Uh, it posts well, the ergonomics are perfect, right? Uh, it's not back heavy, uh, the section's very comfortable. Um, I really like this pen again, <laughs> I think I said that before. However, I find myself reaching for it a lot less than my other ones, uh, simply because the line thickness, uh, you know, again, for me, I personally like having an extra fine line so I can layer my cross hatching. Um, with this one, it's a little too wet and a little bit too thick for my liking. But look, if that's your thing, uh, definitely get it. Um, for the price, um, I forget what it costs. Uh, look, I think in the US it retails for about $225. Uh, I think that's what it was on Goulet Pens uh, last I checked. And there doesn't seem to be any discount on it when buying it directly from Japan. Um, I was lucky enough, however, to buy a used one for about $100. 40, maybe about $160. And from my experience, and I just checked, uh, it's not so rare to see used 912s for sale. Um, it might be a little bit hard to find an FA, so you're going to have to scour a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, for $160, I think it's a good deal. $225, oof, uh, that's kind of pushing the price a little bit. Okay, uh, now let's talk about the last option uh, the Pilot Custom 743. Pilot, I don't know if there's a custom there, 743, also F-A. Um, all right, uh, so let's talk about this. So first of all, uh, the nib on this pen is a little bit stiffer, um, a little bit, it offers a little bit less line variation. It writes uh, a little bit drier than 
the Pilot 912, which is mostly the pen I'm going to compare it to because uh, these are similar to each other. These two pens are very similar to each other. So let's take it through its paces really quickly. Um, you can see it put down so it puts down a finer line than the Pilot 912. So sort of close to a line, the same line as the Pilot Falcon. It has more line variation than the Pilot Falcon. Not as much line variation as the Pilot 912. Uh, let's see about the wetness. All right, uh, so again, maybe I should put down a little bit more ink. It's a little bit drier than the Pilot 912. It doesn't gush quite, quite as much. Um, all right, let's do a little doodle. Oh wait, I forgot the figure eights. This pen is a little bit less squishy, a little bit more bouncy, more springy than the 912. Um, and uh, this is something that I've heard said on the forums. Right? The Pine 912 is so soft, uh, it can be a little bit hard to control. It doesn't bounce back quite as readily as um, the Pilot 743. And overall, I think the performance of the nib here with, this is a number 15, uh, number 15. This is the number twenty, number ten uh, nib. The performance of the number fifteen is generally said to be superior, and I think I agree. I mean, it's um, in terms of the ratio between wetness and flex, uh, it just performs better than the nine twelve. So let's do a little doodle here. So less flex, but again, you know, when you're drawing, based on your drawing style, you really have to think about, you know, how much flex do you really need in your pen. Unless you're doing something that's like really flourishy and requires calligraphy, uh, maybe you don't really need that much flex out of your out of your nib. Maybe the flex can be kind of excessive. All right. Uh, look, as for the furniture, the body of the pen, uh, all these pens are very similar in weight. Um, this one has a few additional O-rings, uh, more more furniture-y kind of stuff, more decoration. It definitely feels a little more premium. Um, but uh, because this cap is so heavy, it makes the pen a little tiny bit more back heavy uh, when you post it. Um, you definitely feel kind of get, get pulled back this way. Um, though maybe it's because I've been using the other pens, I can kind of feel the difference. Uh, it definitely feels a little bit more back heavy than other ones. Um, however, uh, this pen is perfectly long enough to draw with unposted. Um, once again, uh, it comes with as all the other pens with the exception of the Falcon, it comes with this excellent push button uh, Con 70 converter, which is great. Uh, anytime using a flex pen, flex pen, um, the ink capacity is pretty important. Uh, something definitely to consider. Um, so, uh, if I was going to choose between the 743 and the FA, look, uh, price starts coming into consideration a little bit. Uh, the FA you know, again, I bought this used, but uh, this is 225. This is going to push into the mid 200s, probably. Uh, I was trying to find things used. Uh, I just haven't found anything used. Uh, not so common. Um, and then again, this pen is only available. It's actually not available in the US market, uh, so you have to buy it directly from Japan. Um, a little bit difficult to obtain the FA, so you have to sit a little while on eBay and look for it. Um, but uh, to me, look, I think it's worth it. Um, this pen, is, the nib on this pen is really superb. Uh, it works better than the other ones. Uh, it has just that perfect amount of bounce. Look, uh, sometimes there's prejudice, right? The more you pay for a pen, the better you think it is. Um, hopefully I'm not being prejudiced <laughs> because of the price. Um, I think it's worth it. Um, and you know, look, uh, as far as architecture, there's definitely like a premiumness to it. Uh, it's definitely a nicer, kind of more more substantive, substantial pen. Uh, so is it worth it? Look, you decide. Um, all right, so there you have it. Um, I hope this was useful. Um, look, I certainly would have wanted something like this when I started my fountain pen journey. I hope you found it useful. Um, most of the videos I'm currently making are for my students and are sort of made in support for my online classes. But uh, if I see more general interest, um, if you leave comments, uh, I'll try to do more fountain pen reviews. I definitely have lots of other things that I want to talk about, uh, lots of different lines of fountain pens that I can discuss. And perhaps even other drawing materials like uh, brush pens and pencils and stuff like that.